So let's go over four probability questions together. This first one says, what is the probability of choosing blue? So with probability, you ask the specific ask over the total. So they're asking for blue. So one, two, three, four, five, six, six blue out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. So the fraction would be six out of 12. Sometimes they'll ask you to reduce that fraction. So you divide both bits by the greatest common factor. So it would be one over two, which is the fraction form of the probability of choosing the color blue. So the number of events that is, that's one, meaning there's only one action that was taken. They choose blue. Now, if they said, what is the probability of choosing blue, then choosing red, that's two actions. Choosing blue is the first one, choosing red is the second one. So that would be two events. But because they are only doing one action, which is choosing blue one time, then the number of events is just one. So is that event an independent event or is it a dependent event? So because it's just one event, it can only be independent. If it's two or more events, then you can decide whether they're dependent or not. So an example of a dependent event is if I were to take a blue and then after I pick a blue, then I don't replace that color blue. The reason that event would be dependent is because it depends, the second event depends on whatever color I choose the first time. Also, the number of marbles inside the bag or the number of colors inside the bag will change after I remove one. So that's a dependent event. So then we're gonna write that fraction as a decimal. So the way that we write fractions as a decimal is we take the numerator and we divide it by the denominator. So it'd be six divided by 12. Six divided by 12 is 0.5. So written as a decimal, this probability would be 0.5. So then to convert that as a percentage, we have to move the decimal point over to the right twice. So one, two. So we add a zero here and write a percent sign. So it would be 50%. So the probability of choosing blue can be written as a fraction, six over 12, or as a reduced fraction, one over two. It can be written as a decimal, 0.5, or it can be written as a percentage, 50%. It's only one event because it's one action choosing blue. It's an independent event because it's only one event that's not affected by any other event. And then it's asking the probability of this event. Is it unlikely, likely, certain, or impossible? Certain means there's a 100% chance of happening. Impossible means 0% chance of something happening. So it's only 50% chance of happening. So it's not certain and it's not impossible because it can happen. So we're either going to have to choose, is it unlikely or likely? So if I told you it's a 50% chance of it raining tomorrow, would you bring an umbrella or would you not bring an umbrella? You would bring an umbrella because it's likely that that event would take place. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to circle likely. We have three more problems just like this that we're going to go over together so that we can learn the difference between independent events and dependent events and whether something is unlikely, likely, certain, or impossible to happen. So let's go ahead and go to the second question. It says, what is the probability of choosing an even number on one die and an odd number on the second die? So you're choosing an even number on one die and then an odd number on the second die. So the number of events we already know is more than one. It's going to be two because there's two different actions that we're thinking about. We're getting one, die, one number on one die and another number on another die. So there's two events. We're rolling two dice, two events that are gonna happen. So is, are these events independent or dependent? Well, if I roll this dice first and roll this dice second, does it matter what I get on this dice Will it affect what I roll on that? No. So because this first event has no effect on the second event, then it's still an independent event. It would be dependent if the second event is affected by whatever happened on the first event. But fortunately, when you're rolling a pair of dice, even if you roll them together, what you get on one dice has nothing to do with what you get on the other one. So it's independent events. 
So let's go ahead and find the fraction, the decimal, percentage, and whether this is unlikely, likely, certain, or impossible to happen. So first we have to start with, we're talking about choosing an even number on the first die and an odd number on the second die. So let's first talk about an even number on one die. So remember, specific ask is on the top and total is on the bottom. So the specific ask is an even number. So because we know that there's six sides to every dice, how many even numbers would there be? So it would be one, two, three, four, five, six. And the even numbers would be two, four, and six. So there would be three out of six. So this is the first event, okay? Now it's asking us and an odd number on the second. So again, there's a total of six sides on the second die. And then it says how many odd numbers are on the second die? So there's one, two, three odd numbers on the second die. So it'd be a three out of six chance. Because they're asking us for the probability of choosing this and this, we're going to have to put those two probabilities together. And we do that by multiplying. So we do three over six times three over six. And that'll be equal to nine over 36. So the answer would be nine over 36. But if you're asked to reduce that, then we would divide the top and the bottom number by the greatest common factor, which is nine, and you'd get one over four. So it can either be represented as nine over 36 or reduced as one over four. Now let's write that as a decimal. So to write nine over 36 as a decimal, you would do nine divided by 36. Nine divided by 36 is 0.25. So this probability of choosing an even number on one die and an odd on the second can be represented as 0.25. Now, how do we write that 0.25 as a percentage? We move it over to the right twice, put the percentage sign, get rid of the decimal. So it would be 25%. Okay, so we now know there's two events. They're independent events because they don't affect one another. We know that represented as a fraction, it's one over four. As a decimal is 0.25 and as a percentage is 25%. Now we have to ask ourselves, is this unlikely, likely, certain, or impossible to happen? An event that's certain to happen, again, is 100%. Is this event certain to happen? No, it's not. It's not 100%. Is it impossible to happen? Meaning it's a 0% chance of happening. No, it's not impossible because it's actually 25% chance of happening. Now we have to choose, is it unlikely or likely? So it's one out of four. So say, for example, I draw four circles. One out of four is the chance of us getting this happen, have this happening. So this is kind of a judgment call for you, whether you would view this as unlikely or likely. But if we're going to be fair, I would say it's more unlikely than likely. So I would choose unlikely. But if you were to say, well, Miss Amber, I think that that could be likely. It's okay, because they're usually going to make these numbers um, in your tests or on your homework or in your math class they're usually gonna use percentages that are a little bit more than just 25%. So it can be clear that it's likely, or they may use something a little bit less than 25% for it to be clear that it's unlikely. In this case where you're not really sure, is that likely or not likely? Well, then you can go ahead and make your best educated guess. So let's go ahead and do two more problems and we can see if we get another chance at choosing between likely and unlikely. Okay, so this is problem number three. It says, what is the probability of choosing an ace in a standard deck of cards? So we're choosing an ace in a standard deck of cards. So again, how many events is there? So the number of events is going to be one because you're just trying to choose one ace out of a standard deck of card. So the number of events is just one. So if it's just one event, this event is going to be independent.
because there's no other events that are going to affect what card I pull out. There is no other event that can affect it. So it's an independent event because there's only one event. Okay, so now let's go ahead and make a fraction out of this. So how many aces are in a deck of cards? So now this problem, like a lot of probability, this problem requires you, you to use outside knowledge. The outside knowledge that this probability question requires is that you know how many cards are in a deck of cards. So the standard def deck of cards has 52 total cards in them. This is something that you need to know. Even if you don't play cards, even if you've never played cards in your life, this is a very common question that may appear on your standardized test, on your college entrance exams, on your algebra homeworks, college statistic questions. It's very important that you know that there is 52 cards in the standard deck. So if the total is 52, then what is the odds of you choosing an ace? Well, there are four aces in every deck of cards. So the top number would be four and the bottom number would be 52. Now, if you want to reduce that fraction, we can divide it by the greatest common factor, which is four, and you get one out of 13. Okay, so one out of 13 written as a decimal, you would do one divided by 13 and you get something like 0 0.076. So you can round that to 0 0.08. So if we write that as a percentage, 0 0.08, write that as a percentage, that would be 8%. So if something has an 8% chance of happening, that would probably be unlikely for it to happen. It's very unlikely that you would choose an ace out of a deck of cards. 